Shalom everybody, Shavua Tov, welcome back. It's now a new beginning after Zot Hanukkah. So now we get to actually begin to see the formation of the year. Until now everything was dwindling, especially with what happened this year on Simchat Torah, October 7th. So visit Hashem, we should now start with good footing on the right direction. We're continuing with where we left off, but before I forget, please, please, if you enjoy these classes and they're changing your life, and you see the light of Rabbi Nachman of Nosen penetrating and relating to you personally, please, please share these classes on your status or wherever else you can. Thank you. All right, we're continuing with where we left off in Likute Alachot, Rav Nosen's Likute Alachot section, Or Achaim, the laws of Birkat Hoda'a, the laws of blessings of giving thanks, the laws of thanks, the blessings of Birkat Gomel, giving thanks, thanksgiving. We are still in paragraph 24, and we're still... In Rav Nossin's opening up of the Pasuk from Parshat Vayetze, where Yaakov is fleeing from Esav to go towards Lavan on the commandment of Yitzchak and Rivka. Now, even though we've passed this parasha, nonetheless, Rav Nossin's message and insight is so relevant no matter where you're holding in the year. So look what Rav Nossin is saying. Before we go into the new section that Rav Nossin is going to open up on this Pasuk from the opening of the Parsha Vayetze, let us again look at the entire Pasuk so you have an idea of what Rav Nosin is opening up, Bezat Hashem. So, if you recall, Parshat Vayetze starts off like this. The first Pasuk, Vayetze Yaakov mi Be'er Shava, Vayelech Harana, right? Then Yaakov left Be'er Shava and he went towards Haran. The next Pasuk, that's, that's verse 11 now, in this chapter uh, chapter 63, sorry, chapter 28. Vayifga Bamakom. And Yaakov was pogea, which has many interpretations. One of them is prayer. He, play, he prayed in that place. Another one is that Hashem made a shortening of the derech, of the, of the journey. So it was pogea, which means a sudden meeting. Because the, like the Midrash says, Rashi brings down, that Yaakov went already all the way up to Haran. And then he realized, I, could it be I passed Yerushalayim? And I didn't daven in the place that my Avram Yitzhak, my fathers, my forefathers davened in. So he went back and Hashem made a pigia, a sudden meeting of the places, okay? And here, Rav Nossin is interpreting it as pogea, as a bouncing. You bounce into something, you pogea. A pigua, also a terrorist attack, unfortunately, is like an attack. It's like suddenly a, a meeting, a occurrence which is pretty, pretty difficult. So Rav Nossin's interpretation is vayifga bamakom, that Yaakov reached a level by coming to the place of the Beit HaMikdash in Yerushalayim, he reached the merit to, to meet the level of the Keter, which is revealed at the place of the Holy Temple. Specifically in that place, more than anywhere else in the world, in a physical existence, the Beit HaMikdash, the Harabite, is the place where the Keter can be revealed. And that's what happened with Yaakov Inu. So it's Pogia Bamakom, on a spiritual sense also, because Yaakov was someone who was doing the mitzvot with joy, so he reached the level, the merit of now going up and up and up and up and up, until now he's able to reach the Keter, and the nature, the way of the Keter, is that it, it specifically bounces a person back. So that's Vayifga Bamakom, and like we said, Vayal and Sham, he saw that he can't rectify everything then, then and there, so he had to sleep, and going to sleep in dormant mode, is a way how to, to wait and wait and be patient for the rectification to take place. That's the idea. You have no choice but to sleep overnight here. That's like an expression, you know. We can't do this tonight. Stay overnight and wait for tomorrow. As if to say patience. Kiva Hashemesh. And he says also that the reason why that they, they, he had to sleep and be patient because that's the characteristic of the cat there. And because Kiva Hashemesh, there's no more light. If there was light, he can continue. But the light is taken away. Kiva Hashemesh because the sun set. And then, like we said, he took Yaakov from the stones, the letters, the holy letters, which are rooted in the makom, again, this keter. In other words, even though he's sleeping, and while sleeping, he fell back into the exchange chambers, which all this we mentioned in the previous classes. So he took, in the meantime, collecting, he was able to gather in the holy sparks, the holy letters of Torah, which were trapped in the exchange chambers. And Mavne Makom, so he's able, their, 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 orig, their origin comes from the Makom, but they've fallen, these holy stones. So he's able to gather them in. The, the, the Avanim, these stones which rightfully belong, their rightful place is in the Makom, this place which is the Keter. And he didn't 
leave them. He kept them with him intact. He put them under his head as if to, he attached these holy sparks, holy letters to his thoughts, his mind. Vayishkav, now we're holding in these words. Vayishkav bamakomahu. And Yaakov slept, shochev, which also is the letters, yesh kafbet. There are 22, what's 22? The letters in the alphabet. There are 22 letters. Vayishkav bamakom, again the third time in this verse. Uh, and that place, Mama Komahu. So watch how Rav Nosen now opens up these last three words. Vayishkav Bama Komahu. And he slept in this place. So he says like this, Rav Nosen. Vezehu Vayishkav Bama Komahu. And this is the meaning of, and he slept in that specific place. And Rav Nosen's precise. He's Medayek. Bama Komahu Daika specifically in that place, which is the place of the Keter. Shehu ha-makom shepagabo. This is the same makom place mentioned in the beginning of the verse that Yaakov bumped into. He bumped into. Pagabo. Shebechinata me'akev v'chule kanizkar le'el. The idea of the makom, this place, like we said earlier, quoting Likuti Amor on Lesson 24, this is this high level of the Keter, where its tendency, when you reach the level of the Keter, you are prevented. It's a ma'akev. It's a boundary pushing you back as mentioned above. That's why the lashon ba'ifga. Okay? So he's saying like this. Look at the point. Ki daika lesham kisher machshavto bekesher amitz ad sheyashan. Because even though he was in sleep mode, like the verse is saying, he's sleeping. It was specifically, even though he was in sleep mode, which is considered a down, because it's a taste of death, it's an exposure to the exchange chambers. Nonetheless, his mind was somewhere else. Even though he was in sleep mode, which is like a downfall, which is a pushback really bad. But nonetheless, his mind was connected to the Keter, to the Makom. Specifically to there, did he connect his mind, his thoughts, but in such a strong Kesher, and such a strong Kesher Amitz, a strong attachment until he fell asleep. In other words, even though he had to go to sleep, he did not go to sleep until he first connected himself to that makom, which is the keter. The pshat of the pasuk is he went to sleep in that place. Okay. But what's the depth behind it? Why is he sleeping in that place? There's a message here. That even though he's going to sleep, which is, you know, rare, even on the simple level, how could Yaakov have been asleep on the exact location of the Holy of Holies? What in the world? What's going on? You're going to sleep in the Holy of Holies? That's the point. The point is the message that comes out of this. That even if, what she's going to say now, even if a person has to be in sleep mode, he doesn't go to sleep and fall and detach, detach himself totally from the holiness. He's connecting his thoughts to the Torah, to the root of the Torah, which is this makom. Okay? So he explains. It's like a message for every Jew, not just Yaakov, you know, the tzaddikim, but every Jew. Because this is how it has to be for each person according to his level. Not just Yaakov Avinu, but every Jew, according to what he's going through in life, the following he should work to, uh, uh, to aspire to while being pushed down in sleep mode. Watch this. Because even though the person sees that from heaven or from wherever, they're not allowing his mind to advance in spirituality, in depth, in, con in, con in perceptions of godliness, in advancement of the mind. Even though a person sees that they're preventing him, preventing his mind, the way they're preventing him, there's such obstacles and setbacks that make a person so bewildered and so frustrated and so upside down and so mixed up, so his mind is not clear, okay? So even though a person sees that really they're trying to prevent him from advancing, just having a clear head because of everything happening in his life, Nonetheless, He has to do his part and flee, run away from the bad thoughts. Because when a, when a, when a person is pushed away from advancing in the mind, and the mind's tendency is always to advance. A person wants to advance. So if now that's not happening, if it's not happening, a person is pushed back, so... The other option is, God forbid, to entertain bad thoughts. 
Because if my mind is not advancing and it's saying like it's staying stale and it's like stuck in a, in, in, in a place, it can't just stay there. Automatically, the tendency is for a person to go down because he's being always surrounded and entertained by evil thoughts. So it's so easy just to go into them, to, to occupy his mind with these negative thoughts. So he's saying, even though that's what normally happens, and you're being pushed back, and you feel like you have no other alternative than to enter the world of the negative thoughts, the negativity. There's like a major psychological lesson here, Rav Nosson is introducing to us. Right? How do you do that? Even though you're like pushed away, you're pushed back, your mind doesn't have to be pushed back. You are being pushed back, and the surrounding is pushing you back. But you have still the free will and the option to connect and attach your thoughts to what's called mekomo shalolam. It's an amazing insight. If the present is not working out and is or just going downhill, you have another option also. You can reconnect to a level which is way above you. Mekomo shalolam, which is an expression of the place of the world, like we said earlier, is an expression of the keter, this high connection to God, the highest possible level, connecting to Hashem's infinite light. You, Nachon, it's true, you're overwhelmed by the negativity and it seems like you forget and you have no option then other than just to go into the negativity, join your mind to the negativity. But he's saying here that if you determine, you, you make a conclusion and you're determined that I connect my mind to the Torah no matter what and you're subconsciously strong in this connection, so this connection will prove itself as a guarantor for you, that so that when you're exposed to a negative sign, a situation, a scenario, instead of just the one option to go into negativity, you have the option to remember the Keter. Amazing. Because most people say, what do you want? I'm overwhelmed. They're just attacking me, attacking me. Okay, that's true. But you, before this happens, if you make a commitment to connect yourself to the Keter, you say, I'm going to make Kasher Atzmi to attach myself to this high level called the Keter, what that does for you is subconsciously when you're faced with the next challenge and the next blow in the face and the next negativity, negativity and the attack on uh, negative thoughts and it's trying to bring you down. But because of your Keshe that you did earlier, retroactively it comes forth as another option so that you don't just see, oh, there's only negativity and just going to go into it. You see also the option of the Keter. That would... Instead of just only looking down, they make you like put on blinkers like a horse, all oh, this only going downwards. You're reminded that there's another option of going up to the Keter. Phenomenal. But this he's saying is like, like Yaakov Avinu did. He, he attached the stones to his machshamar. He put the stones under his head, meaning he connected the stones, the holy stones to his brain. So even though he's being, being uh, what's it called, uh, mixed up from the sleep mode, which is the mode of the, of the exchange chambers, which is due to the pushback from the Keter, which is necessary, yes, but you don't have to fall all the way down into the test. You don't say, okay, because I'm pushed back, so I might as well just go in all the way and indulge myself in my negativity and my lusts and desires and just blemish my thoughts. No, you have another option of remembering the Keter. How does that happen? If before that you are working on making a solid Kesher of your mind to the Keter. You establish that connection. I'm going to mikasher myself to the highest level of Kedusha. So even though I fall, the, the way I fall, nonetheless, I won't be uh, persuaded and dissuaded by the negative in, saying, ah, anyways, you're just a low life. Anyways, you're just a nobody. Just going all the way. Because I've connected my thought to the Keter deep inside, always it makes a presence. No, you have the option. No, even though you are as you are, but your thoughts can be connected to the highest level. So even though you're going to sleep, like Yaakov is sleeping on the Holy of Holies. You're sleeping there. He's connecting his thoughts to the Keter, to the Makom. That's Aydeh Vayishkav Mamakomo. Let's see how continues. Okay? I'm just going over again. Let's continue. It's amazing because Rav Nosen works on the specification of the verse's wording on that place, hahu, makom hahu, that place, as if to say, even though he's sleeping, vayishkav, he's sleeping, nonetheless, ba makom hahu, he's still connected his thoughts 
to that place, Makomahu, Shepaga Bo Yaakov, that Yaakov bumped into, and I was bounced back because of it. So you, you, instead of thinking, ah, so it's not for me, it's bouncing me back, so I have no merits to connect to it. He doesn't say that. He says, ah, this is a prerequisite of bouncing me back, but I'm still connecting my inner thoughts to that place which I'm being pushed away from, the Keter. Okay? It's amazing what he's saying here. And even though, like we said, he cannot yet still perceive or understand anything from there because they pushed him away. When, when the cat is pushing you back, what's being pushed back? Your perception, your, your, your inner connection of understanding and thoughts. The, the essence of yourself is your, the neshama is, is the thoughts. And that's what's being pushed back. You're, you're not allowed entry. In what sense? Spiritually. In other words, in perception, in the mind, in the feeling, in the motion, in the mind connected, you're being pushed back. Nonetheless, I'm still, he says, even, again, even though I'm being pushed and I have no perception and no conception of, of that place, nonetheless, I should, my mind should be connected there through the Avne HaMakom. Avne HaMakom is a very deep concept. It's the stones of the place. He said earlier of Nosen, these are the holy sparks, which represent the holy letters of the Torah, which a person encounters while searching in the exchange chambers, while being far from God. He picks up holy sparks and holy words, which are represented in the hints that Hashem sends a person of godliness in his mundane existence at work, on the street, with people, in the bars, in the movies, in the secular ass attitude of life, he's able to pick up hints that Hashem is sending him, and he takes them. That's like the idea of Avni Amakom. And it stinks to them, these Avni Amakom, that when he eventually goes up towards the Keter, he makes an advance in spirituality, and then he's bounced back. So from where in the first place does he have any connection to where he wants to go to? It's because of the Avni Amakom, the stones of the place that he was connect, collecting anyways when he was stuck in his mundanity. The, the, the hints, the, the flashes of holy light and a reminder of Hashem and the Torah and the Muna, etc. that Hashem was sending to a person. It's that, it's that which a person collects with him. It's in his pocket. And now he's going up to the Keter, to the root, because they're called Avne HaMakom. These stones belong up there. And now he's going up, collecting them, going back up. Him also... And nonetheless, he gets pushed back. What keeps him in track is these stones that he collected from down there where he was initially. We collected to try to re-bring them back. That's what allows him to remember not to fall all the way. Amazing, okay? Shem, and what are the, like we said, what, like we said earlier, what are these holy stones? Avne Makom. What are the stones of this place, of the Keter? Shehem Bechinat Otiot Torah. These are the aspects of the letters of the Torah. Ad sheyishan mitoch divrei Torah. Until a person falls asleep in words of Torah. This means also many things. First of all, you should know, it's mentioned in the Code of Jewish Law, that when a Jew goes to sleep, he should go to sleep with ideas of Torah. Because that many people have the custom, before going to sleep, before saying the Kriyat Shema of going to sleep, Kriyat Shema Lamita, they learn something. I mean, you, have, you need a merit for that also. Most people, they come home, they're exhausted, they're wasted, they can't think. They don't even remember if they said Kriyat when they went to sleep. They're just so conked out and zonked out. That also person has to dive in to have the merit to go to sleep in holiness. Rav Chaim Bital writes, I saw this in Rav Shechter's, Yaakov Mer Shechter's book called Leket Amarim. In English, it's been translated as In All Your Ways. Leket Amarim Chalek Bet. He quotes Rav Chaim Bital who says, and it's sad because it's, uh, you know, we, we, have, we have to work on this for the people who have this problem. That the way you go to sleep is the exact same way you're going to die from this world. In other words, how you go to sleep in your lifetime reflects how you're going to leave, leave this world. So if you go to sleep like just like an animal, like a behemoth, oh, and you're just tired and you just forget about Kriyat and you're just so tired. So it's a reflection how you're going to leave, leave, leave this world. So you have to really work on it to change that. It's, it's not meant to break, break us. It's meant to push us. So I have to change and work on how I go to sleep, okay? But for those who have the merit already to go to sleep, what's called Bikidusha Vitara and holiness. So what most people try to do is to learn some Torah and before going to sleep, that way they can go to sleep with ideas of Torah in their head. 
And if those who don't have the chance to learn Torah, at least when they go to sleep, to go over the Torah ideas that they learn during the day, okay? That's on a halachic level, and it's ideal, and it's amazing, and I wish personally I can do that, and many people wish they can have that also. Now, on a deeper level, when it's also referring to when you are in sleep mode, you're just a walking zombie. You, while you're awake, you're, you're sleeping, in other words. So he's saying even then, you should, if you're, if you're sleeping, at least let it be sleep within Divrei Torah. Meaning what? Even though you, you know you're a zombie and you know you're out of it and your head is not working and everything's upside down, still your subconscious should be connected to the Avni HaMakom, the stones that you've collected from already in the past. Now, how do you do that? Like he said earlier, that by us, like he said, by, and Yaakov put the stones under his head, meaning you're always looking when you have a green light in life, when things are okay, you're not looking for status quo. Okay, I just want to be here. It's comfortable. You're looking to advance to the highest level possible. Why? Because you know the, the green light's going to turn red very soon. I'm not going to be here forever. I can't keep, I can't just assume I'll be comfortable in this comfort zone forever. And if they open the green light for me, I know it's limited. And if it's limited, I'm going to maximize my experience and my opportunity to connect officially. And I wholeheartedly connect my thought, my thoughts to the highest possible level. I'm not satisfied with status quo because my life is not status quo. It's filled with so many ups and downs. There's no stability. No stability. So what do you want from me? If now it was status quo, I would settle just for anything. But because life is so un unstable, going through so many ups and downs, when there's a green light, I aim for the maximum. The maximum, which is the Keter. And I'm a kasher. I attach my mind to that level so that when there's the red light and life goes again like a yo-yo on a roller coaster, right? So that I'm able, almost like a reflex, an instinct to remember the keter. No matter what I go through, there's all, and even if I fall, yes, we can fall, but there's the reminder of connecting yourself to the keter. You're in sleep mode, but you don't accept to fall in the sleep mode until first you connect your mind, your subconscious to the thoughts of the Torah, which are these stones, the idea, the significance of the stones of holiness that you connected in your journey. You remember them, you remember your task and your mission in life, and with that you go to sleep. So even though you're in sleep mode, which is far, you're still connected to the makom, the keter, because of the avne makom. It's a phenomenal, what Rav Nosson is saying here, the, the deep message here. So again, until he sleeps within the words of the Torah. And Rav Nosson is saying all of this idea. And this is the idea that, that Yaakov slept. Like we said earlier, quoting the Balaturim. Yesh Kafbet. He went to sleep, but on condition that first he collected, he had, Yesh, he had, there is 22, 22 letters of the Aleph Bet, 22 letters of the Torah, Bamakomahu, that he slept, and even though he was sleeping in sleep mode, was connected to that place, Bamakomahu. His mind was connected to the high level. And it's a reminder for all of us that even if we fall asleep, which also means we're in sleep mode, we're out of it. Our inner, inner part of our mind should be always connected to the highest level possible, which is the Makom Ahu, Hashem, to be continued in upcoming classes. Thank you for joining.